So I've been using a dual monitor system for almost the entirety of my adult working life. Never quite paid attention to the specification of those monitors. Uh, whenever I go searching for uh, monitors to use, I've always focused on getting a good size at a budget price. So when I go on Amazon, I just find something that looks reasonable um, and is you know, quite affordable, usually less than $200 a piece. And that has always been you know, good enough until I started my YouTube channel and then I started to work video editing because I do edit my own videos. And um, I, um, it started to become a little bit challenging um, because I think of the incompatibility in the specification between my computer and the monitor. And I think mostly because the monitor wasn't just built for that application. So I did a lot of research and I settled on this monitor. So hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's episode, I'm going to be sharing with you guys a quick note on some of the specifications that I considered that landed me on this monitor. So if you're new to my channel, you'll find that I, I cover a variety of topics from sewing to homemaking to general lifestyle. And I know that you will find something helpful here. So consider subscribing, uh, sharing and hitting that notification bell so you know whenever I have a new video for you. So before we start talking specifications, I'll get my assistant to unbox this monitor and set it up for us. Grab a cup of tea and enjoy the ride. So one of the really cool features in um, the LG monitor is the split screen system and um, it wasn't quite straightforward uh, setting it up and so I decided to show you guys how to do that. So follow the steps as illustrated coming up.
So easy peasy, that's how um, you set up the monitor. It's not difficult at all. Let us jump into talking about the specifications. So instead of taking a deep technical dive into all of the possible specifications that all the monitors out there have, what I'm going to do today is talk about what I need in a monitor and how the specification of this monitor makes it fit for my purpose. Hopefully that will make someone's decision making a lot easier than mine when I was doing the research for this monitor. So there are four main areas that I considered in my research. Um, it was setup, it was functionality, efficiency, and quality. And so I'm gonna be talking in those terms. So first, let's talk about setup. So my studio is a multi-use space. Um, I shoot my YouTube videos here. I also sew here and I do uh, some other personal business here. And because I have a fairly small workstation, I strongly considered getting a single rather than a dual monitor because it was going to be a little bit more tidy than having you know, two monitors with two stands. So in terms of functionality, I use the uh, Adobe Premiere Element for my video editing and the software, in my opinion, works best with a single monitor. They do have a dual um, monitor option uh, in Adobe Premiere, but it didn't work great for me. I don't know if this is, um, you know, general experience out there, but definitely that, um, that was another point for getting a single rather than a dual monitor. So managing the timeline is one of the biggest considerations when you are um, in video editing. And so once I settled on the fact that I um, wanted to have just a single screen rather than a dual screen, the next thing was considering the size. I considered 32 and 34 inch, but finally settled on 38 based on my research because the, the 38 gives you a very wide screen um, for better efficiency with your timeline, but then also gives you that height where you can see um, uh, the entirety of your stacked um, video production space. So I, um, in terms of efficiency, I thought it was better served with a 38 inch screen um, rather than a 32 or a 34 inch screen. So let's move to the actual quality of the monitor. And this is where all of the technical specifications comes in because all of the other ones I talked about is just you figuring out, you know, um, what space you have, what functionality you want the monitor for, and uh, what you, um, what factors affect your, the efficiency of your workflow. And then once you've established that, it's really um, a little bit on the efficiency, but also on the quality of the monitor. So in terms of quality, I'll be talking about five main technical components. The first one is the panel type. This monitor is an IPS um, monitor. So IPS monitors have very good viewing angle. They have more realistic color representation and they can get to much higher resolution at really good refresh rates. And that is a video editor's heaven. So the resolution of this monitor is um, ultra wide quad HD plus, and that puts it at 3850 by 1600. Uh, in resolution with an aspect ratio of about 21 to 9. This is awesome, guys. It is not quite 4K, but for the size of this monitor, it, um, it would show you a very clear, realistic um, picture. It is um, a, a little higher resolution than an actual Quad HD, hence the plus, but um, a little lower resolution than uh, a 4K, which is about 3850 by, I think, 2160. So also the color accuracy on this monitor is awesome. And it's rated to, I think, an sRGB of about 99%, which means that you're near perfect. Uh, color reproduction, which makes it um, a really good tool for picture and video editors. So for my research, um, brightness uh, of a monitor is considered exceptional. If it's above 250, um, the brightness of this monitor is at 300, which makes it really, really good. 
So this monitor is uh, fitted with a HDR, which is high dynamic ratio, which allows it to get to really, really good contrast ratios. And the contrast ratio on this monitor is about a thousand to one. Good contrast ratios are um, quoted to be within a thousand to one to three thousand to one. So it's not at the very top of, you know, the contrast ratio heaven however it is considered a really really good monitor and for um you know for someone like me for the work that i'm doing it is more than sufficient so refresh rate actually this is um what really killed me with my older monitor because for people who are using monitor for just day-to-day -day business the refresh rate that they require is around 30 hertz um but for video editing the minimum refresh rate um, that you need without pulling your hair out of your head is about 60 hertz this um monitor comes with a 75 hertz refresh rate which makes it um a little bit more than enough now for people who are gaming with monitors um 75 is plenty but for like really avid gamers that you know want the response like that um i think that a refresh rate of 100 and higher might be what brings you that experience but f uh, if you are buying monitor for video editing this monitor is you know super super um enough for you and trust me uh, after experiencing um, the <laughs> slow refresh rates that I had with my older monitor. Um, this has been fantastic. It's been phenomenal. So guys, as you can tell, I really love the monitor. It's all that I hoped for. It is not the cheapest monitor, but it was an investment into my business because uh, monitors are not what you buy every year. Uh, and so I will leave, um, you know, the link to, um, the Best Buy link in the description box below. I bought it from Best Buy. I will also try to find the same monitor on Amazon and leave the uh, link in the description box below. Um, I hope that uh, all of the information that I shared makes your decision making uh, a lot easier. So don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I appreciate all of your encouragement and support. Until next time.